I made a point in the previous episode about how line quality can have story value. That is, how the actual style of a line can be of narrative use. I still think that's really true, you know, style is very important in informing narrative. And after reading Jippy's absolutely magnificent one story, it's just another showcase for how style and line choices have direct impact on narrative, and how they can entirely inform the reader on what a scene is doing. So in this episode, I want to look at how style informs narrative in that comic, and what it says about the way that we can approach it in the medium. You're watching Strip Pile Naked, I'm Hass, and I'm going to show you some of the cool stuff lurking in the pages of some of the best comics. So the best sequence I can show you for understanding this approach is just right at the start of the comic. I think naturally we tend to expect that comics will just sort of look the same throughout all their pages, which is probably an assumption drummed into us from other mediums, and arguably the somewhat sort of fairly homogenised appearance of direct market superhero comics amongst others. And I talk a lot about artifice in comics, and how that allows you to essentially do whatever you want, because the medium is naturally full of artifice. So changing style within the same comic, you know, even from panel to panel, is not necessarily as big a thing as it might be in other mediums. You know, it's not really going to ruin the suspension of disbelief in your comic. So here is a sequence which begins with narration, a narrator telling us about an 18-year-old that suddenly wakes up and goes to look in a mirror, and sees themselves with the skin of a 55-year-old. You know, seeing both of those images side by side is probably enough to understand how that change in style impacts our response to images, but let's dig a little deeper into it. The first image, you know, to me, reads an attempt at a kind of reality, right? You know, it's coloured, it's painted reality. We see the 18-year-old, we see a rendered image, it connects. And when we get to the next image, we see this heavily lined face. Look at all the lines under the eyes, around the chin, across the forehead. The colour is entirely gone, and the calm serenity of the previous image is basically flipped. So the image asks us to engage with it in a very, very different way, right? In the previous image, form and shape was made by colour and shadow in the paints, but here it's made by lines. So to understand this image and what it's presenting, and I mean that in the very basic concept of, you know, what are we actually looking at, you know, it's this face, we have to read the lines. And what are lines on the face, right? They're, you know, their age, their wrinkles, their sacking skin, they're all of that. The more lines you add to an image of a drawing, likely the more lines we're going to understand that to represent, you know, the more wrinkles, the more lines. So to understand this image, we have to understand the wrinkles and the sag and the age that time has given it. The image is only lines, so we must read only lines, whereas before we could read colour. So each of those styles asks us to engage with something different, right? The black and white line style, especially without any approach to heavy shadows on the face or anything like that, asks us to read the image in a very, very different way, and the lines themselves focus on a specific aspect of the drawing. The heavy use of shaky lines means it feels sort of rough, you know, irregular, presumably the way the man sees himself, sees his own face. So the style of the art becomes a very important point in the narrative. We understand how he sees himself, not just his age, right, but the way he actually considers his own face, this kind of undefined, wrinkly, sagging mush. The way it, the image exists is exactly like that, so it ends up feeling especially subjective. And to take a look at a reverse example, uh, later in the story we see a moment where the man's daughter and her partner are having a conversation about the state of her father. He's had a kind of nervous breakdown and they're discussing the reality of the relationship. It's rendered in a fairly clean and open style, right? reminiscent of the earlier example, but actually it's still a different type of rendering. The faces are quite open and clean, but a lot of the rest of the image is scribbled in with these lines, which gives an emphasis and focus on the faces and the acting compared to everything else, where everything else ends up being sort of stripped back. So again, we're being asked to read the lines, you know, much fewer on the faces, which means we read their reactions as a primary concern. The daughter mentions a moment when her father got worked up about his great-grandfather's letter, and on the next page, we have this moment, right? Three painted panels of this memory. Jippy has spent the few pages establishing a look for this comic, or at least for this scene, removing any trace of colour from the pages, and stripping back any heavy inks or anything that could be considered a block of colour, and replacing them with these scribbly lines. So we suddenly get this infused moment of colour, which brings this to life, right, in complete contrast to the rest. This conversation is somewhat cold and frank, but this moment is being brought to life by her father's excitement, you know, healthy or not, and so Jippy renders it in a way that creates that life on the page. It's another clear instance of where the style has narrative value, and it's different than the comic switching to black and white for a flashback, or, you know, going from colour to a kind of monochrome thing. This is specifically a switch up in the approach for a narrative reason. The switch to colour asks us to understand why. Is this a moment of her father that she remembers vividly, or, you know, a moment to emulate her father's mental state as someone fixated and excited on something which clearly became a fundamental part in his later breakdown? 
Either way, whichever a reader decides to kind of interpret, the change in style becomes part of the story and those painted colors end up having story value. And it asks you to engage and think about this moment in a little bit of a different way than stuff previous to this. And the final example I want to look at comes right near the end of the story. The man's great-grandfather is seen in the war here, hiding in a trench as opposition soldiers come close. His friend has been shot and is making noise that will give them away. And so the great-grandfather places his hands over the mouth of his friend. And the comic changes from rendered colour to black and white, but yet another variation on black and white line art from Jippy. Now it's a heavy black, you know, thick brush strokes, and the scratchy lines are reduced in favour of that. So again, the style asks us to read it in a different way, and see it differently. No longer is it so much about the lines and form, but it's about the blackness, right? The darkness of this man's life being sucked away, and the heavy, thick, almost angry brush stroke that invokes a completely different response than the somewhat more sort of calm pen lines we saw previously. And so I have to interpret that in a different way as a reader. I have to feel that image completely differently, because each of these choices ends up engaging with me in a different way. So that's three examples, right, from just one comic by Jippy of black and white line art from the same artist in the same comic, but in each there is a different approach and therefore a different narrative value. And yet none of these feel out of place, right? They essentially have the same style to the figures presented, but different choices in rendering imply different reasonings and invoke different responses. Comics is one of the few mediums, or you know, maybe the only medium, in which doing something like this does not disrupt the reality of the story that we're seeing. These switches, in many cases very sudden, never make the story less believable, even though they draw much attention to the artifice of the thing that you're reading. In fact, because they ask you to engage in a different way and interpret them in new ways, it asks something of you from the reader to engage yourself in that way. Therefore, if anything, it makes these stories even more believable and even more real and true to a reader. Comics proves once again to be an incredibly versatile medium with a multitude of ways to take advantage of that. Jippy's one story is a masterpiece because of this. Thanks for watching. If you're a fan of Strip Pile Naked, you can support the channel via the Patreon, where for your pledge and your support every month, you'll get access to literally years and years and years of exclusive writing annotations and reading lists. You should also grab yourself a subscription to Panel by Panel magazine, which is the Eisner winning magazine that I edit. The latest issue has a huge interview with Anna Genti and Dave Aha from The Seeds, where we get into their process, look at their roughs for their scripts, the pencils, straight through to the inks. It's a really, really deep dive interview that I don't think you can find anywhere else. You know, it's 40 pages of just getting to hear them talk about crafting comics. If you like Strip Panel Naked, you will love that issue of Panel by Panel. Otherwise, hit subscribe and the little notification bell to keep up to date with all the latest episodes, and I'll see you next time.